Morning y'all. Let's do a swing today, shall we? So this swing was sent to me on my Instagram account, at Crossfield Mark. If you don't already follow me on there, give me a follow and you might be the next person getting a swing fix at some point. Um, I like this one because we're going to see quite a classic idea of chicken winging on the way through. Lots of good movements in here. Um, so we see left arm on a collapse, almost looks like the club wants to flick forward a little bit. He hangs back a little bit as well. He obviously hits um, plenty of good shots, but maybe we could get plenty more good ones in there. I'm going to use a system today that really shows you the problems that you have with that weak grip, which in then in turn will get you thinking about these kind of impact positions, these breakdowns of impacts, maybe in a slightly different way, which hopefully can get you thinking a little bit more in a constructive way that might help you golf. So chicken win, it's there because of that grip. Let's show you what I mean. Let's get the talky golf club. So let's show you two shots. I've got my 4D motion system on, so I'm going to give you some 3D look at what I'm doing in certain areas. And we're going to address the elbow that we talk about and the wrist. Let me hit two shots. One, first one where I hit my regular shot. Second one, I'm going to try and recreate his swing. We'll show you the difference. So again, weak grip. I'm going to see if I can save this club with elbow and wrist angles in effect. What I mean by save, to try and make the ball not go way right. I want it to go somewhere near target. Which I've done. I've caught the ground slightly, but I've hit target. So if we look at the two graphs here and the images, I've got both swings on top of each other. The swing I'm moving at the moment, this one is where I've got the weak grip and I'm trying to recreate this player's movement. The one on the top here. This is my swing. Now, if you look at the left elbow bend movements at the beginning, so I'm minus 17. So I'm not afraid to get my elbow going the other way. So not even straight, it's bending the other way. My left arm is a little bit funny. But if you look on the other swing here, I'm three. So I'm three degrees bent compared to minus 17. That's a 20 degrees difference in how I'm setting up and how I'm using my left elbow, which, so the one, the three degree bent to me feels extremely bent compared to the 17, obviously, um, what could we call that? Opposite to bent. So if we go up to the top of the back swing with these two, um, so I'm going from minus 17 to six degrees bent. So my left arm isn't staying as straight as it might look on camera, but remember I'm starting in anti-straight. And then if we look at his swing that I'm recreating, I've gone 13, so I've gone from 3 to 13, 14 degree bent. So I'm bending my left arm, or getting my left arm considerably ready to try and collapse to help with this club face as it comes into the ball. That's at least what I feel as I come into impact, to impact here. It's now 9 degrees the other way, so I've gone back to my normal action of trying to straighten that arm. Can't break that down out of me, no matter how much I'm trying to in the rest of the swing. So if you look at the two again for me, nine degrees anti-bent on his swing compared to 17 degrees anti-bent on my swing. So my left arm, to me, will feel massively more bent than where I naturally put it. Because you've got to remember, zeros are not a thing. I mean, zeros are relative to us. You'll see great images of Lee Westwood hitting balls with a bent left arm. Well, he can't extend it, so his bent is his zero. My zero is minus 17. When I use his grip, I've got to go to minus nine. So I'm seriously changing how I'm using my left elbow. And then we really see it on the way through. 12 degrees bent as we go to left arm parallel, almost on the way through to his, or my version of his, 29. Elbow and wrist angles are all in there to try and compensate for what that grip isn't doing, which is giving him the club face control that certainly I would want to play with. Certainly the club face control that I would want him to play with. Do you ever play with a grip? So that left hand being bent too much to his left, not enough over to the right, is causing many breakdowns in what we then see in his arm movement. And what I always worry with players like this is they watch videos on YouTube, they see their arm is bending on the way through, and they'll look at straightening left arm, those are kind of things. As you can see from my swings, the way his arm is working, it's there to help him play better with what he starts with. And this is always the danger when watching videos on YouTube and not getting private lessons yourself. You've got to unpick things in certain orders, that's why you pay for coaches. They've got experience of how to unpick, unravel 
the tricks and conundrums that you throw at us. When amateurs do it, I see such haphazard changes sometimes and you just see people getting worse. And then you get the statement saying, I tried that grip, didn't work. Well, that grip won't work if you don't do a few things at once. Simple checkpoints then. Let's get that left hand on that club and see two to three knuckles. Much more turning around. And again, you're going to see my perspective of what I look down at at the club here. So you're going to be seeing maybe one knuckle. If you take the left hand, you might even start to see the fingers here as you look down. I'm seeing none of the fingers. The thumb basically sits down the right side of the grip. So right centre pointing down at the middle of the club with good three knuckles, two to three knuckles. Get that in your hand and just get the feel of that club moving. This is going to feel so weird at the start. You're going to fight this. You're going to have like massive trouble trying to get this to feel natural. The sooner we get it to feel natural, then the sooner everything else can start to fall into place. And to be honest with you, if we get this grip changed, more often than not, your left arm, the same way it chose to break down, will choose to work differently when you get a bit of feel for what this club face is doing. A good two to three knuckles. Let's make sure it's in the base of your palm as well. Almost running through the tops of your fingers to the bottom of your palm. So the most common problem with this is people get it up through the middle of their palm. That also causes the weak grip breakdown as you hit. So let's get bottom of that palm, top of the fingers, good two to three knuckles. And I want you just to hit a few shots and let everything go. Literally just hit it. Don't try and change anything. Just get the feeling of that grip work. A couple of shots knowing your hands are stuck on that club that way. And you can repeat it. The challenge I want you to do is then pick up some different lofts. Try a driver, try a wedge, try the seven iron that I'm hitting here with that grip. Which one feels more difficult? Give that one more time. Changing your grips in places like at home, those kind of ideas can totally transform how these elbows work. Another drill I want you to do, but we better head back. We'll give you that at home. Simple drill, you can do it at home. Sorry about this, I'm waiting for a phone call. With your wedge, take your new grip. So making sure you're seeing the two to three knuckles, it's in that base of your palm. You can do this at home in the range. I want you simply to go into a position which feels like a right angle to you. You can flatten your left wrist with your lead arm if you want, you don't have to. And all I want you to do is go from here, so the face is pointing say, straight out in front of you. And I want you to put that club into another right angle with lead arm and then shaft of the club on the way through. But I want the face pointing behind you. So you're going to get the feel of this club face rotation coming from the fact that your arm is basically doing this. So it's supinating, moving this way. For me, I would do this on the core, so I would be before a shot, just a couple of these, and then I would step into a shot and try and get the same feeling on the way through. With that new grip, you're holding off with your elbow, it's just not gonna work. We need to get the feeling of your left elbow. Rather than bending this way, feeling like it's bending this way more, because it is still bent. It isn't straight on the way through. It does break down, and the numbers showed that from earlier on. Great one to practice. Phone's ringing. I think I can see. Can't believe I can see, can I? But that sky's blue, definitely. Next drill, continuation on that first one. One hand at the top, one hand on the metal. Split hand drill. From here, really easy to feel this crossover on the way through, this club face coming over as your left arm folds in the more constructive way. You're there more, which to get the crossover of the face, basically your left hand has to start coming off the club. So I want you just to do a few of these. Again, you can do this on the course. Feel that right hand going above your left as your left arm just folds up rather than out, and then bang, try and hit some full shots doing it. It's a case of getting that grip set. Your wrist and arm will start to function, I think, a little better. If it needs that little bit more help, you've got these two drills just to work in there and see if you can develop that feeling, because that's all you need a drill to do. It's there to help develop a feeling. Something you can take on the course and find any quality of strike and control, but the main work's going to come out of that grip. Love to hear how you get on with this. For me, the biggest problem is people thinking that the chicken wing is a problem. For most people, the chicken wing is it's functional. It's there to help you hit better shots. Just trying to remove it is going to do nothing apart from often make you worse. 
it's stemming from this instance and lots of times it's coming the same way, it's coming from the grip. If it's not coming from the grip, it's coming from the amount of loft that you present and you try to control that loft and then in turn face the path angle by having to break down that left arm. So therefore the chicken wing as a fault that you might all be searching the fix in your search terms, it's not actually a fault, it's a product of. It isn't something that you isolate and fix because if you do, you're just gonna blitz the ball generally straight to the right and you'll stop wanting to fix it pretty quick. It is one of those terms I see in golf coaching that is used definitely just to try and dial into people's ideas of, yeah, it should be all really straight on the way through and what they want a perfect look, rather than understanding that, like I say, it's a product of, it's not really a thing in itself. Thanks for watching, as always, see you tomorrow, catch comments down below, let me know what you think, is it something you've worked on, thought about, is this a new way of thinking about it or not, let me know, as always, down there, hit the thumbs up button if you like the videos, and don't be afraid to subscribe to the channel if you don't already. See you all tomorrow.